Welcome back to Studying Together. In episode 15, we're taking a look at the topic, Living Life to the Fullest. As we begin, let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for how you continue to interact in our lives. How it doesn't matter what we're doing, who we are, who we might be, you are continually invested in us, in our present that leads into our future. Father, guide us as we take a look at this topic, as we continue to study your word, and even more as we seek to understand and to be more and more like Jesus. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things that God wants for each one of us in our lives, whether that's moment by moment, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, you name it. There's many things that God wants. One of the biggest things that he wants next to having us solidly in a relationship with Jesus is living life to its fullest. Now, we can dream, we can picture, we can try to figure out all we want, but we'll never understand fully the depths of what God has planned. But we do know this, that his plans are so immense, they're so amazing, that if we trust him, he's going to lead us through the now into eternity. Let's take a look at the verses that we have for today. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2. Now, this is the third book in the three books that are written near the end of the Bible by John the Apostle. Apostle John the Beloved, he's known by many different names. We know that he wrote the Gospel of John. We know that he wrote Revelation. And we also know that he wrote 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. But right here, this verse says this, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers. In order to keep going, we need our whole being to be able to do what it needs to do. There is no way around it. You, know, you can ask people that have all these troubles, what is it like as far as trying to survive when you have problems with any part of your body? They'll continue to tell, tell you that it's hard to do what needs to be done because you, you don't realize what you lack until you lack it. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25 says this, And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. God promises that things are going to be provided for. Our needs are going to be provided for. for. As one person once said, God promises that our bread and water are going to be sure. He says nothing about donuts and orange juice is for us to remember continually that God has such immense plans. He has a purpose that is beyond compare. Question is, what are we doing? How are we listening? And how are we going forward in Him? John chapter 10 and verse 10 says this, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came so that they would have life and have it abundantly. Text is pretty clear, isn't it? Jesus came so that we would have life yet again. From the beginning, the concept of everlasting life was taken away from us because of a choice that was made. However, this is something that I love continually. We're told from Genesis to Revelation that even though the choice was made, before the choice was made, a decision was made that Jesus would pay the price so that we would be able to be with him forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, looking at verses 19 and 20, says this, 
Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, in that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. That's how much God loves us. He loves us so much that that plan has been from the very beginning. And everything that we do, everything that we say, needs to continue to give glory and honor to Him and Him alone. It's it's that simple. It's that clear. But what are we really doing? How are we really living for Jesus? Or are we living for Jesus? The choice is ours. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says this, Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all things for the glory of God. That's really the only way that we can live to the fullest, isn't it? Is if in everything that we do, everything that we're saying, we're continually giving God honor and glory. Genesis chapter 1, looking at verse 29, says this, Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. From the very beginning, God made sure that we were supplied with what we need. Too often these days we're always looking after what we're wanting instead of looking at what's really going on. You know, even with this concept, God even made things so clear that he told us specifically, hey, there are things that you should not eat. There are things that I made that specifically are designated as, you could say, nature's garbage truck. And we're supposed to stay away from that because it's not healthy for our bodies. If we're not watching after ourselves, how can we be able to go out and truly take care of what God has asked us to take care of? Now, I encourage you to, to go and take a look in, in Genesis, in Leviticus. There's a number of different areas that talk about what God tells us to stay away from. But, he, you know, even in this, he continues to come back and say, there's a reason why I've asked you to do certain things. One of the things that God continues to come back to us on is saying, when it comes to things like alcohol, you need to stay away from those. Because it literally changes the way that you think. It changes your judgment so that you're really not able to think properly or, dare I say, even for yourself. We need to make sure that we know what's going on so that we're able to live the lives that Jesus continues to ask us to live. The scripture is clear. There's no other words that we can use. God puts puts things in order so that there is a permanence for us. Often we will not be able to understand, but it is for us to connect. This is why even right here, Exodus 20, verse 13, specifically looking at the Ten Commandments, what we need to remember, these are Ten Commandments, not Ten Suggestions. Now, the Israelites were given these because they had a disconnect from God. When you look at these, these things are what God's character is in verity. It shows us who he is. And he's not saying, you know, if you don't do this, I'm going to slap you on the hand with a ruler. No. He's saying, you know, because you love me, here is a way that I'm asking you to live. 
One of these happens to be verse 13, where it says, do not murder. In other words, right there, it's saying, don't take a life that is not yours. But even with that, don't do things to your own life that are going to make it to where you cannot have that connection with me. There are so many excuses that we could talk about. How people are trying to push things off, but the only way to live life to its fullest is to live life in Jesus. To live according to how he continues to tell us, not just in his word, but in other areas as well. This is the only way that we're able to continue on with life. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25 says this, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. So they do it to obtain a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Life is to be a joy. Not just that. Ran across this a couple days ago. Something that's from a very well-known children's host mentioned this many, many, many years ago. The fact that life is for service. The joy in life comes from serving others. That is the very love language of God. That's what keeps us going. If we're not willing to serve, how are we going to be in eternity? Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says this, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Making sure we have that connection. Making sure that we know what's going on. Last verse that we're taking a look at in our time together. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says this. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Now so often that verse is taken out of context. What Paul is talking about here is in order to be able to do everything through Jesus, first you need to learn to be content. I have learned the fact that no matter what's going on, I'm okay. I'm at balance because I'm in Jesus. I encourage you, take a look at that that section. And even more, the whole chapter, it has very important significance to how we're able to, to live our lives so that we're ready to live together with Jesus throughout eternity. This is something that we need to continue to study time and time and time again so that we're ready to live together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that fact of how you're calling us to a different life, a life lived now that's ready for a life lived eternally with you. Guide us as we continue to seek your face, as we continue to live in Jesus, and as we, as we continue to shine your love and grace to all those around us. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time in episode 16 as we continue to study God's Word together. God bless.